Welcome to introduction to Redshift for 3ds Max. Let's start with downloading and installing the Redshift. Head over to Downloads page. Click on New Version Announcements. Now choose the latest topic and download the latest installer. Open it when it's ready. Make sure the installer have selected the right version. On this page, I recommend you to take a moment and carefully read what the page says and let's begin the installing process. Now it's finished, let's open the demo scene. First of all, let's enable Redshift. Head over to Render Setup. And here I will choose Redshift both for Production Mode and for Active Shade Mode. Now let's check new UI elements that appeared after we installed Redshift. Right click in a viewport and here are some Redshift specific menus. In Common Panel Geometry tab, here are Proxy and Volume buttons. In Lights section, you can see Redshift lights. And no camera, because Redshift used standard 3ds Max camera. Now I'm going to start an active shade. As you see right now, it looks strange, and that's because we don't have any lights in this scene. So let's create Redshift Physical Light. Let me enter XYZ position for this light. I have here some values prepared. Let's take a look at the settings. First of all, I will set length to 10 and width to 5. In Intensity tab, we can change the color by choosing the one we need or by tweaking the temperature. For example, lowest value will be closer to candle or tungsten light. And greater values introduce more artificial kind of lighting. But I will stay with just plain white color. The intensity is way bright now, so let me dial this down at 10. Right now, our light is visible in active shade. And we can uncheck this option to hide it. Here you can see that this light is working in both directions, and I will uncheck this option and make it light only what's in front of it. Now let's change the shape. Let me just turn it back to visible for a moment. Right now, the shape is rectangle. We can change it to disk. Let me just zoom in a bit to show you how it looks. We can also turn it to sphere. And there are some other options, but I will stick to Sphere. And turn off Visibility. If you will take a closer look at the shadows, you can notice that even though our environment has highly saturated yellow colors, our shadows stay pitch black. And that's because right now there is no bouncing light. So we need to enable global illumination. Head over to Render Setup and NGI tab. I will turn on Brute Force for both engines. Since Active Shade, same as Progressive Mode, use it by default, no matter what option you choose there. Now let me restart Active Shade. The left render window has GI turned on, and by comparing the two, you can notice that shadows became not even just lighter, but also warm, with yellow color in there. Now let's create a dome light. In the Redshift Light section, I will choose Dome. Let's select where to place it. And you can see the changes in active shade. For now, the dome is lighting with plain white color. So here in bitmap slot, I'm going to add an HDRI. Click open, OK. Now we get some shadows and blue colors from the map. Now let's rotate it to 156 degrees to catch a better sun angle. And I see now that this dome light is too bright, so I will set intensity lower. Now, let's recreate the metal material used for these knobs. Let me switch to perspective, zoom in a bit, and convert it into new camera. Let me restart active shade, and also I will turn off dome light for a moment. Now, let's open material editor. This multi-material is assigned to this radio. Now, let's find here material called knobs. Now, I'm going to load clean material for fresh start, Open Redshift drop down and you see here it has plenty of materials. For most tasks, Redshift material will do the job for you. You can notice that after adding new material, Active Shade still shows us the old one. And this is a temporary behavior because 3ds Max plugin is still in development. So right now I need to restart Active Shade window by clicking this button. And another walkaround will be by assigning a hotkey for that. To do this, in Customize User Interface, Keyboard tab, find Active Shade Floater. Choose it and assign any key you want. Now let's tweak this material. In this drop down, you will find some presets of different materials. For example, basic plastic, aluminium, gold, and plenty of others. Let's choose an iron preset. 
First thing, I'm going to change BRDF to GGX. BRDF is a shader model and roughly saying GGX is better for metals and Beckman for non-metals. Now to make this material more glossy and highlights sharper, we need to decrease roughness parameter. Let's enter a value of 0.32. And let's bring back our dome light. Now let's take a look at camera effects. Head over to rendering menu and here you'll find environment. The hotkey for that is number 8 on your keyboard. I have an exposure control being set up already so let's turn this off and on to reset it. And also I'll clone the render window to compare. Now I'm restarting the active shade. After resetting the exposure our shot became darker. Such exposure parameters like ISO, shutter speed and f-stop number all three mean for us the brightness. I will set f number to 7. Let me clone this window and restart active shade. The shot became a bit brighter and now let's check what vignetting does. Some extreme value like 800 will show the effect. As you see we get this dark frame on the sides of our image. Since we have perfectly white object in the scene it's easier to demonstrate the white balance. I can simply color pick this area and dial down color a bit so we'll have less extreme effect. Now let's restart active shade and compare the two. As you see the image became cleaner and the muddy warm tones are gone now. A load over exposure is a very important parameter. Lower value compresses your bright areas, brings it down to safe zone to prevent washed out overexposed look. The default value is 0.2, however to show this effect better I will enter a value of 0.1 first. Now let me clone this window to compare. Right. And now let's do another quick render with value of 0.4. At first glance our image looks brighter, but that's not the case. Take a closer look. We allowed more bright values to pass through. Result is more clean image with more contrast. Roughly saying our highlights are more powerful right now, which results a bit more dynamic lighting in the image. The black crush allows you to push your dark values further. Let's enter a value of 0.6, which is too high for this parameter, but just to check this out. Restart in active shade. And you can notice how we enhance the dark zones in the shadow here. Although this option might be useful at some point, the black crush is a tricky thing. You can notice that in the dark zones there is not enough saturation, so too much of this effect may look not quite right. Bokeh effect or depth of field is pretty awesome in redshift and really easy to use. I will switch to second camera and hide the back wall. Let me restart active shade. Now we are still in environment window. We just need to switch to second tab, click add and choose redshift bokeh. Restart in active shade. You may ask now why it's not blurred. And to control the amount of blur we need to bump up the COC radius. Let's try 12. Restart active shade and now it's visible. For demonstration purpose I will go even higher to 22. Great. Now take a look at these circles. We can change its look using power parameter. And I'll set it to 12. Now you see the circles have changed introducing sharp edges. Also we can change the circle shape to something else. In blade count I will place a value of 5. And now instead circles we see pentagons. Now let's talk about rendering quality or sampling. If we will render this scene in production mode without any setup it will be pretty noisy. But after some quick setup we'll get noise free image. So what things are causing this noise? So this is our render. Roughly saying it's built out of several render elements. Some of them are lighting, reflections and global illumination. Let's look in detail. Here is our lighting. Without any setup it's noisy. But when our number of samples get higher the image is now clean. Same with reflections. Out of the box it will be probably be noisy. But after adding some more samples the noise is gone. And global illumination. Double brute force with 16 samples and comparing it to 500 samples. Now let's get back to 3ds Max. Let's switch to production mode. In output tab you can find progressive mode. It's similar to active shade we were using before. It ignores all settings here and works in auto mode so we will leave it as it is turned off. In GI tab you can notice that even though we enabled it in active shade it's still disabled now. I will replicate the same settings we had before. Now let's make a test render. As I showed you before, I recommend you to eliminate the noise and render elements one by one. Let's start with lighting. I will turn off GI for now. 
In Optimization tab, I will also turn off Reflections and Refractions. In System tab, you can change bucket size. Bigger bucket size gives you a tiny performance boost, so I'll set it to 256. Now let's make a test render. Here is the noise from lighting. Let me select dome light. And here in samples, I will enter a value of 512. Now I will select physical light. And here I will set number of samples to 64. Now let's see the difference. And the noise is gone now. Now in render setup, I will bring back reflections and refractions. And let's make a test render. Here is our render and I see some noise in the front panel of this radio. Let's open material editor and select front panel material. In reflection section there is samples option. Let's set it to 256. I will clone this render element and hit render. And the noise is gone now. Let's bring back global illumination. I will set brute force for both engines and leave everything at its default. Now let's render. Default sampling values are too noisy for us. You can see it especially in shadow areas. I will clone GI render element and in render setup I will increase number of rays to 512 and hit render. Now we have our GI clean. But double brute force is not the only option we have. Previously our render time was 1 minute 15 seconds. We can cut it to 50 seconds and get even cleaner image. Let's decrease number of rays to 256. And instead of using brute force for second engine, let's select irradiance point cloud. Now let's render with the new settings. The left window is our new render. And you see we have less noise and render time lowered from minute 15 seconds to 53 seconds. I hope this video was useful for you and thanks for watching.